Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we're looking at a ship that probably whenever you're going to encounter it in battle is going to look exactly like this. This is the Dunkerque, the French tier 6 premium battleship. She's been around for quite a while. I'm not 100% sure if she came in before the De Grasse or after the De Grasse as the first or second French premium, but uh, she's been there for a while and I got her out of something recently, I can't even remember. The Dunkerque, historically, was a really interesting ship. Not so much with what she did after she was built, um, but what happened before that. So, I mean, after she was built, well, the French kind of got a little bit overrun by the Germans, and then the British were trying to sink their stuff, and then she got damaged, and then repaired, and damaged, and repaired, and bombed, and that was more or less it. But before she was built was actually a lot more interesting, because there was the Washington Naval Treaty. And the French were complaining because the core of their fleet was made out of aging things like the Courbet and the Bretagne class ships. And if you've ever played the tier fours and fives on the French tech tree, you know why they were complaining. <laughs> These things are terrible. <laughs> so they uh, they want they got a well. Everybody else had to stop building building battleships. They got a seventy thousand ton budget to build new things to replace these aging ships. So did the Italians, who were kind of one of the main competitors of the French at the time. Remember, this is pre-war. So that then led to the two basically playing a game of chicken to see who would blink first and build something so the other one could build something to counter it. Well, enter the Germans, as usual, <laughs> no, <laughs> making things difficult for the French. The Germans came up with the Deutschland class of, well... They called it cruisers, but they were really pocket. They, the British called them pocket battleships. Things like the Admiral Graf Spee, the Tier Six German, extremely heavy cruiser with 283 millimeter main guns. So the French were kind of panicking and said, "Okay, well, we're going to need something to counter these things. We're going to need something that's quick. We're going to need something that can have enough armor to defeat the 283 millimeter." guns of these things, and we've got to have big enough guns to sink them in return. And they have to be quick. And they have to all fit within the 70,000 ton limit, because we can't just build one of them, we need a couple. So, very interesting requirements. <laughs> what do we want? Everything. When do we want it? Now. Which led to the French designers coming up with this thing, clearly inspired by the Nelsons from the British, by putting the two the two turrets up in, in front, they were basically saving a bit in terms of armor, because they didn't have to expand the whole main belt citadel plating all the way to the, re to the rear after the superstructure, because there was no other turret, there was just the kind of secondaries loitering around there, and the rest of the ship didn't need to be that well protected. And these things were sufficient let me put it this way, for their purpose, which is to deal with things like the Admiral Graf Spee. The Italians, upon seeing these things, went, oh, ha, the, <laughs> the French have blinked, let's build bigger ships. And they came up with what's effectively the, um, the Roma style of ships, the tier 8 uh, Italian premium, and they had 380 millimeter guns. In what made then the French panic, I was like, oh dear, <laughs> We're being outgunned by, the, outgunned by the Italians. We're going to need bigger ships, which led to the Richelieu, the tier 8 French premium, which has a very similar gun layout to the Dunkerque. So the Dunkerques themselves were pretty much battle cruisers. They had just, they were just really purpose made for countering the Deutschland class, which of course then led to the Italians taking the chance in the game of chicken and building bigger things. I, I found that a very, a very funny sort of kind of explanation of how tense these things were at the time and everybody kept an eye on everybody else to see what they were doing and was just trying to build things to counter things that someone else had. Uh, and, and in a way, it's still like this today, right? If you look at um, missile defense systems and intercontinental missiles or just mid-range missiles and the various treaties and the various tensions coming out of these things, it's still the same story. Everybody looks of how big a stick the other one has and <laughs> tries to... Tries to a, counter the stick and have a bigger stick or a big enough stick of their own working within the limitations. So that's how we got the Dunkerques. Uh, as they, like, like the Nelsons before, uh, on the British side, they have both turrets in front and that's when that's where the Richelieu's went as well afterwards. 
So what are these things like in the game? We've got 37,000 hit points, which is not terrible for tier 6. The armor is a bit questionable. And again, these things were built to defeat the 283mm guns of the Deutschland class, so the Graf Spee sort of thing. They were definitely not made to defeat 380 or 400mm guns. So uh, be careful. She is not extremely well armored. This is a battle cruiser in, in a way. She's quick though. She's real quick. 28 knots is a very, very respectable speed for a tier 6 battleship. And the guns, well, the guns are a bit of a mixed bag. The, uh, the two, so they're two quadruple turrets, and they are 330 millimeters. Well, again, because they were expecting the, to use these things to chase down Graf Space class ships, which 330 millimeters was sufficient. It was bigger than the Graf Space guns, and they had enough of them to deal with them, and they were fast enough to do so. But you will find that you will struggle a little bit against more heavily armored enemy battleships because 330 mils is a bit underpowered for a tier 6. It's usually around 356 or 380s. So mm, that said, they do reload reasonably quickly and they do... Um, they do, they do have a reasonably, pre, or can have a reasonably precise distur, uh, dispersion. Which means, given that they're both in front and they're super firing, unlike the Nelsons, who only has two out of her three turrets super firing, or one really super firing over the other, the third one's behind, this thing can go completely bow in and fire like that. She's a bit like a Richelieu, really, but a tier 6. So not quite as big the guns, but still a very, very similar playstyle. Her secondaries are actually not quite not that terrible. She has 130 mm secondaries, which do a very respectable amount of damage, and she's got a decent amount of them. Again, and if we look at the rear, uh, we can kind of see it here. So she, she's got these three turrets with three quadruple secondary turrets, basically, which, um, which, fi which fire rearwards, and they can kind of fire to the side, at least two of them, sometimes three if you're giving enough angle. So you, you can really get these um, you can really really get these pointing pointing out and she's got these twin 130 mils on the side which can point forward. So this thing has a very respectable array of secondary gun gun batteries, and um, her AA is not completely terrible either, with 166 on the large caliber. So all in all, it, it's a battle cruiser. It's a fast ship. And um, it, it has, again, just like the Richelieu in Tier 8, has very interesting tactical capabilities. Because she's obviously a defensive ship, because, you, you know, you can plant yourself bow in somewhere and just, just fire at long range. And these shells actually work pretty well at plunging fire. Or, if you need to, you can get, this, you can get the engines up and you can actually relocate reasonably quickly. Unlike, say, the Nelson at Tier 7, which uh, is a lot slower than this. So how have I set her up? Uh, the the elite ship bonus. I've got definitely going gone for the reload because I don't want to put the reload mod in the main guns because if you lose one of your turret, you lose half of your firepower. <laughs> That's not something I want to deal with constantly. So I've gone with the reload. Uh, torpedo damage reduction, 10% of what, what, what does she have? She's got, what, 13.5. So it wouldn't have been super large amounts of damage reduction anyway. And mostly when you're dealing with destroyers, you just go bow in, bow, bow in and, um, uh, well, blast away with high explosive at them. <laughs> so the, uh, the equipment I've got in here. So I actually have ended up using the secondary bud mod 1, which increases the, or which decreases the reload time on the secondaries. And the reason here is that, well, tier 6 can get a little scrappy occasionally and you do your, your team oftentimes doesn't really pay attention to flanking things so when you're holding a position and you're getting destroyers come after you which happens more often than not then uh, you can just motor away uh, keep, keep the distance open as much as possible and hark away with the, with the secondaries of them and she's got a good array of them i would have liked to take the precision mod on the primaries but well she doesn't get it at tier six so that's that. 
The second slot is the propulsion mod, and I, I do realize a lot of you have told me, oh, Richelieu should have been taking the propulsion mod in the second slot. And I might try that out, <laughs> because <laughs> just because it is a, a really good mechanic to be able to just change your, your ship's direction and get off the ground very quickly if you need to. The third slot is in the steering gear, because her, her traverse was not not great it's a short ship it's a broad ship so she, she didn't she didn't turn very well to begin with which is why i put that in here in terms of supplies no, no surprises here it's just my standard battleship layout the commander um i actually i think i put a unique commander on this thing because again she doesn't really i think this is the one i'm, I'm sharing with the richelieu actually she doesn't really lend herself towards um, a trainer because the French battleships on the tech tree line eventually get the reload consumable, which the, both the Richelieu and the Dunkerque are not getting. They're getting the precise aiming. So slightly different setup here. So for, for example, here I would eventually go for the marksman skill and in, in any other French uh, ship I would go for fully prepared. So that's a fairly significant sort of difference in, in upper tiers. Which is, which is, and I have enough French commanders, which is probably why I'm just going to keep this one between Dunkerque and Richelieu and leave the other one on the main line. Other than that, uh, well, again, really no surprises here. So that's the Dunkerque. And she's pretty. I mean, look at this ship. I haven't put any camo on, you might have noticed. And that's because she just looks so pretty. I mean, look at her. Look at the French flags going across the turrets, and then the uh, and then the flag waving there. This is a, this is an absolutely beautiful ship in my opinion, and I really like the forward turret layout. In in this in this regard, so let's go and have a battle. Okay, we are top tier. We've got a New York König, another New York, a Sirius, a Kirov, and two destroyers on the enemy team, and. Um, well, we're playing New Dawn. This is a nice map. It's got a lot of islands, a lot of places to, to park your ship in. And um, we'll be heading out on the flank. So we'll definitely go with whoever goes into A cup, unless everybody tends to tur turns turns over into B. Uh, on this map, I really like securing the flank, at least one flank. So you're not getting cross-fired from there. Because going everybody going middle is, is just a recipe for disaster. So I'm going to fire up the engines and I'm going to head over towards A. And it looks like the Motsuki is going A and the Galissonier is still trying to make up her mind where she wants to go. So, yeah, she's quick. 29.2 knots. Uh, unless you're turning her, obviously, but she always does 30 knots. Okay, the Galissonier is heading over towards B, which means Mutsuki and me are going to uh, are gonna take care of A of, on, of the flank on this side here, unless somebody else wants to join us. Now I'm spotted, but there's no destroyer in A, which means that something is just right before the cap. Got my spotting radius is forever. Okay, there's the Kirov. And the Kirov is giving broadside, so... Uh, precise aiming up, blind shot. And we'll see if we can still catch her. Yeah, that was a pretty... that was a couple of decent hits. So we're holding A. There's, there's two of us in here, so there's at least there, there can be. Oh god, oh, there's the Fubuki. Yeah, I knew there was something else in here. Okay, slam on the brakes, turn in. I've got the armor piercing loaded, so that's what it is. Um, the up oh, got a full pen. Secondaries out, and I might take one or two here. That's one. That's two. That's uh, entirely survivable. Haven't had time to switch over to the high explosive because I was busy steering the ship. So just a couple of. Um, more armor piercing shots out at the Fubuki. Forward secondaries, not really gonna do much. Yeah, they're all overpinning at this point, but um, just backing off. Fubuki shot, she, Buki shot her torpedoes. She's not gonna go anywhere near me for for another 30, 40 seconds. There's a New York, and the Kirov is still around here. So New York, uh, tough customer. Let's aim a little higher. Try to get, but we're too close for proper plunging fire. Um. Yep, no, not bad, no, not bad, not bad. We did get, oops, sorry, I'm blocking the Mutsuki here. We did, we did get a couple shots. Okay, there comes the Kirov, and the Fubukis can, can come back any second now. And I'm getting cross-fired from the other side. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to move. I'm gonna need to do something here, so rush to New York. And, um, let's hope that he panics. 
because I'm pretty sure that Fubuki is gonna be reloaded and she's poking around that island any second and I can't be sitting here. So speed on and uh, yeah, the New York is panicking and it's trying to turn away which means his guns are out of alignment which means I can just keep firing at him. I had a bit of a lag here. Where's that Fubuki? Oh, yep, I see you. I see you. Okay, don't stop. Just keep going. Uh, he's not that quick. It's gonna take him a while to catch up with me. Okay, New York's dead. Britannia takes him out, which means the Fubuki's after me. And the Galicinia bluffs him against the island. Well done. Okay, that's what I wanted. Did not want to deal with that guy. Okay, turn. Now we turn around. How does it look? We are two ships down. Enemies three ships down. We're leading in points. We're holding two caps. And we've cleared up... Uh, We've cleared up the, the A flank pretty much. That New York is very, very dead. Uh, he manages to dodge these torpedoes. No, some, most of them, not all of them. And there we go. From this range, like, uh, we, we can get a plunging citadel. Even on an, onto a New York. Okay, New York is a tier 5, so um, she's only built to withstand 356 mils. And I've got 330s, which isn't that far off, so a couple more shots out at the New York. But um, he should be pretty much dead. My team can clean that one up. So there's three of them there. So I'm just gonna motor over to B Cup because we are even on ships while we lead, we are heading points because we're holding two of the capture circles. But our team has died over in C and the enemy team's holding B. So there's still two minutes left. Okay, New York's dead. Um, now, who's there? Oh, Kirov, broadsiding at eight kilometers. Hello. <laughs> Have some of this. There you go. <laughs> yeah, don't do that, people. So what's the Kirov up to? Kirov's not shooting. Oh, he's shooting at me. Kirov is, is rushing. So um, that's a desperate move. Okay, he would have enough time to burn me down, but um, if you're rushing, like if you're getting rushed like that in the Kirov, someone wants to get their torpedoes away. Well, I'm not having any of that. Just putting the brakes in in case he did get torps away, because the further away you're from the torpedoes, the bigger they spread, and uh, the more chance you have to just thread a needle between them. Okay, let's get into B cup because he did get B cup. I mean, we're 300 points ahead. There's no way they're, uh, no easy way they're gonna win this, even though they do hold two of the cup circles, but not for long. Okay, I'm spotted, but then again, I'm spotted from, from the next map over, so that's unsurprising. Something is within my gun range. Uh, we're just inching forward here. Get into the cup and see who's showing up. Someone's behind that island. Oh, this is serious. Okay. Serious and Precise shots out. Uh, how did these miss? I honestly can't explain that to you. Um, <laughs> I mean, obviously, I, I, I stuffed it up, but uh, okay, Serious is gonna have torps out. Yep, there they come. But there's a very nice uh, Dunkirk shaped hole in the middle between the spreads. So uh, now you're sitting in your smoke screen. What are you gonna do? You're gonna turn around? You're gonna get another nice König now. Up there, there come the single fire torps. Okay, I'm just gonna gently turn away. I might take one. Can I scrape by that? No, I just scrape the paintwork. That's okay. The other two are not gonna hit me. And your smoke's gonna expire any second now. Now I can go forward again. There you are. Goodbye. <laughs> Ten seconds left, and there goes the Sirius. I love this ship. <laughs> she is, she is about as much fun in tier six as the Richelieu is at tier uh, tier eight. She doesn't have the biggest guns. She doesn't have the like ultimate firepower. She doesn't have the same like blap uh, destroyer capability with the high explosives that other ships have. So you can't one shot stuff. Um, you do you you do need even when you have the high explosive loaded, you usually need two salvos to deal with destroyers. But um, she can turn away, she can run away, she can get distance. And um, she's just all in all a very fun ship to play because again, the same as with the Richelieu because of the versatility, because she can be a position holding tanking ship, even though her armor isn't great, but because of her positioning, you can do that. Or she can be a quickly moving, repositioning, uh, change the outcome of a battle sort of ship. All right, so in, in this game, if I had been in, in an American battleship in New Mexico, it would have taken me forever to get over to B Cup. Once I'm committed that far out on the flank, I'm pretty much staying there for the rest of the battle. With this ship, I can actually relocate into the middle of the map quickly and still make something happen if necessary and take out two cruisers. So th this is a great ship. 
I really, I really enjoy her. Uh, it's, it's really a shame that none of the Tech Tree ships in the French line has the forward turret layout. I mean, they could have introduced the Strasbourg or any of the other Richelieu class ships, um, which actually have the forward turret lay, uh, layout. But um, instead, they chose not to do that and reserved that for the premium. So I would really hope that there was. I really hope that there was one, but it turned out not to be. So unfortunately, again, this is one where if you want one of these ships, you're going to have to go for a premium. Then again, this is a tier six premium, so there's a fair chance that she'll come around in a in a crate or in an event or something, on occasion. Uh, I haven't bought her for money. I've just gotten her out of something at some point. So if you get this ship, she's quite fun to play. If you're a battleship player or a battle cruiser player rather, then she definitely is. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye.